Welcome to my serverless series folks. In this video, we are going to see how to receive inputs from your user and process it in your Lambda function. Since our Lambda function is going to have an API gateway in front of it, we are going to see how to take the input parameter from my API gateway and pass it to my Lambda function, do some processing and send it back to the user. So earlier we saw how to do that with a get parameter and when you're using a get method you can use the query strings when you're using a post method you'll have to send it as a body text and then process it and send back the message to the user so let us go ahead and see what changes we need to make to your code so that you can receive inputs and process it from on your side and send it back i'm going back to my code this is the code that we have for processing a get method without any input parameters say for example you have an input parameter asking for a query and then you want to take that query parameter and do some operations all I'm going to do is I'm going to check whether the input method is get and then I'm just going to add another condition to check whether my event has a query string I'm just going to say query string parameters and I'm just going to say I want the query and this can be anything that you want you can have it as a name username first name last name anything you want i'm just saying it as query and just i'm going to say in method just going to say your query is just going to copy this and put it here and we no longer need the input body because we are just going to go ahead and process the event and send it back to the user. So I'm just going to save this and I'm going to deploy this again. So once again, serverless is packaging it and sending it into my cloud formation and uploading the new code into the uh, lambda functions and updating the api gateway for all the information we just process so we got the results now i'm just going to once again copy this url and move over to my browser i'm just going to use a new tab and not use the existing one and remember we need to pass a query string and that query string requires a tag called as query and search let us say india and here you go you get the result saying your query is india so this is how you pass on input parameters and process it on your lambda functions let us say i'm just going to change it saying uh, wiki and press a there you go you get your query and then you get the value that was passed on to you you by your user so this is how you process it on get methods and now we are going to see how to do it for post methods so let us go ahead and change it in our code for post methods. So the first thing you need to do is go to the serverless.yaml file and add another method here because it's also another event. And I'm just going to say it's also going to be a HTTP method. And the path for that is going to be say query. And then I'm just going to say method equal to post. Let me save this file and I'm just going to go back to my handler file and add another condition to check if it is going to be post method. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this so that we can reuse the code. I'm just going to change it to this one to post and then I'm just going to check whether my event has a body or not. That is whether my user has sent some text that I need to process it in my code. And I'm just going to say, hello user, this is going to be your body. So I'm just going to remove all this text that is not required. I'm just going to say, received your body text. And then I'm going to say, the message body for my return object is going to be this event body that was sent to me just going to make sure that I have got the case correctly and I'm going to say event 
and body. So now we are all set. Yeah, it's supposed to be text. I'm just going to save this and deploy this code again. Let me go ahead and save that. Yeah. So we should get two endpoints after as serverless has deployed this code into our Lambda function and front ended with an API gateway. So once it is finishes deploying and after we test it in the browser, let us go ahead and check in the GUI also how it appears on the gateway console. So serverless has finished deploying and you can see here for a get method, I get a URL which is the path value of results. And for a post method, I have an URL with as a path variable as query. And since post methods require a body to be sent along with the request, we cannot use our browser to do that. We will have to go to our postman tool or you can use a command line for curl as well. Let us go to the postman tool and do this. Here we are in postman. So let us make sure that we are going to choose post here, put in our URL here and go to body section. And I'm just going to have a raw body here and I'm just going to give some body message. So let us say country and then call it as India and then finish the message and then make sure that you are sending it as a JSON object and let us go ahead and send this parameters to our URL now and we should be getting the response here. As you can see, it says received your body text and the text contains a message as country and India. So that is how you process input parameters from your users in your function and do some processing and give it back to them. So if you want to do it in curl on your CLI, that is also possible. I'm just going to written, uh, show you on a quick pre-written text format and then let us see the URL results. Here we are back in the terminal. So if you have a curl command installed, you can go ahead and do this curl and then give the data that you want to send it and make sure you make the header as application JSON. And you also make sure that the method that you're using is post and then followed by your URL. So let's go ahead and submit it to our server now. And we should be getting the same message back saying, here you go. You got the message saying receive your body text and the message contains the values of country and India. So that is how it appears on your console so that you can process it. Let us quickly go over and check it in the API gateway itself. Here you have the API and then you have the description for the API. Let us go ahead and open it. And you can see here under that there are two methods that has been configured along with the path parameters for query for post and the results are coming from get. So if I go ahead and click on that, you will have the configurations for the post method. And here you can see here the integrations for, for the Lambda proxy on the back end. And if I go ahead and open the post method itself, it will have all the options to configure your request headers or if you want to modify them on your API gateway on all those things. So serverless does all these things for you from the back end. All you have to do is manage your serverless.yaml file and then deploy it. And all this configuration that is necessary for your API gateway to work is done for you seamlessly. And once you are done with your function, you can have aliases or have multiple versions of your uh, Lambda functions front-ended with API gateways and you stage them into multiple groups. So if you go to stages, we have only one stage here under test. If you can have development, you can have prod and push them through the different stages and release the production ready code to your customers and your partners. I hope this video tutorial was helpful for you guys to learn how to do serverless architectures in your everyday work. And if you have any queries, go ahead and put them in the comment section. I'd be happy to help them with you. In the future series, I'm going to say how to secure your API gateway and how to use API keys or client certificates or IAM roles to secure your API and then how to do logging on the API gateway itself. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.